Okay, hey everybody. I, I am the nicest guy in visual effects. That is a fact. <laughs> um, so, uh, so okay, I'm going to talk about uh, Solaris, which is essentially a new uh, context in Houdini, and it is entirely based around uh, USD, um, as was just mentioned. And that means all the operations happen on actual USD. It's not turned into a proprietary format or something like that. It happens directly on the USD. Um, and that gives us a lot of interesting capabilities that aren't necessarily uh, available until now. So let's just dive right in. We're just going to walk through a little example of some of the things you can do. Um, and we'll just stay in Houdini and, and see what we can do. So uh, here we are inside of Houdini. Uh, down in the bottom left, you'll see the scene graph tree. And if you've ever seen USD view, it looks very similar to what you would expect. And you can see we can just go ahead and load directly the Duke Kaboom asset, which Pixar was very kind to let us use for this demo. Um, we load it directly into the scene. You see the scene graph tree showing up at the, at the bottom uh, left there. Obviously, the animation comes in. Uh, everything that you would expect to come in comes in. We can zoom in. And because RenderMan is now a Hydra render delegate, we can say something like, well, let's look through the camera that was provided and now switch to RenderMan. And we get this sort of live update uh, in the viewport. We can change the frame range, and everything updates uh, live. Um, and this is really nice. Now your, your whole scene comes through USD. Cameras, lights, materials, geometry, animation, everything sort of in one place. And of course, it's again, it's very live. You can navigate around the viewport just like you would in an OpenGL view. You can see the nice motion blur there on Duke. So, so this is great. We've pulled in the whole scene. Everything is exactly as you would hope it would be. So, Let's start doing some modifications to this scene now. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to say, this is great. We're going to take advantage of something called a variant uh, in USD. And a variant is just really a way of saying, I want to alter my scene graph tree in this sort of non-destructive way. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, we're going to take Duke exactly as he is in this, uh, in this setup. And we're basically going to repeat, uh, replace sorry, his motorcycle with our test geometry in Houdini, our flip toy. Uh, in Houdini. So the first thing we're going to do is put down a couple of nodes that allow us to create these variants. And you can see we can name it. We'll just make Duke the default. And the first step is to say, OK, let's get rid of the motorcycle. Let's hide that, because we don't want that uh, for our variant. Um, so we'll just use the prune node. We can grab it directly from the scene graph tree, just drag it up into the parameters. And there we go. We've hidden, we've hidden the bike. That's great. So now let's go ahead and reference in our uh, test geometry, our toy asset. And you can see that the interesting thing we can do with these tools is actually insert our toy, our new asset, directly into the hierarchy where the motorcycle was. So when we put flip uh, into, uh, into the position where the motorcycle was, it will automatically inherit all of the transforms that existed there. So now we've got Duke. He's on his flip cycle. He's ready to go. And you see it inherits all the animation. Everything comes along for the ride. So, so this, is, this is awesome. And, and what's really great about this is not just that you can do this, um, but that all of this is non-destructive. We're using USD concepts like variants, layers, and so on, so that I can safely do anything I want. I guess I can't light them on fire, I just learned. But I can do anything I want <laughs> to do here. Uh, and it just lives on this layer. So I'm not affecting anything that came in upstream. I can safely work, make changes without harming anything below. Um, and here now, we'll just put down this node that lets us set which variant we're looking at. And again, the beauty of having uh, RenderMan as a Hydra render delegate is that everything updates live. As soon as something changes in your scene graph, it updates uh, live in uh, RenderMan. So we can swip, uh, swap <laughs> dynamically between Flip uh, and Duke's uh, original bike. OK, so let's, let's take this a little bit further now. So we've got. Uh, this scene, we've got flip, we've got a flip cycle. Um, let's make a bit of a race. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just take this whole scene graph now, and we're just going to duplicate it. So we're going to make multiple copies of it. There's lots of ways we actually could approach this, but for the sake of the demo, demo we'll, uh, we'll do something very sort of basic and just say, let's copy everything, the whole scene over, um, excluding the lights. And again, just dragging and dropping from the scene graph tree you can see we're targeting slash world, which is sort of the root level uh, of our scene graph. And we'll just copy everything over. And to make it interesting, we'll make six copies instead of uh, just two copies. 
Um, and there we go. Very simple. Almost like a modeling operation in this sort of look development layout context. So we're ready to go. We've got, our, we've got all of our dukes lined up. But you can see that they're all using the same animation, right? So all of our flip cycles are all in a row. And, and that's not that in interesting. So we want to turn this into kind of a, a race. So what we'll do is we'll make some edits now to those references, to this sort of duplicated world. And we'll do something called instance retime. And what that's going to allow us to do is take that animation and just offset it per copy. And we can do that in, a, again, a lot of different ways. But in this case, what we're going to do is say, OK, all of these, uh, all of these copies, let's target those. And then we're going to look at the internal SOP. And what that means is I can dive inside the instance retime node, and I can get access to all of Houdini's tools. Everything that was there for geometry editing, animation, uh, attribute modifying. You, can, you have access to those tools now as a layout artist or a lighting artist. So we're just going to use uh, attribute randomize. And what that's going to do is uh, let us set some uh, alternative frame ranges here. So we're just going to randomly shift the, the timeline for each of those copies. And you can see now that we can play back and we have a little bit of a race. Each flip is now offset um, uh, from the others in time. So this is awesome. We've, we've overridden. Uh, essentially, the, the start frame for these animations. And then, of course, obviously, RenderMan then picks up all of the changes we made, even though we've created you know, quite a different scene than what we started with. Um, again, all the motion blur comes across. Each, each uh, copy is doing exactly what you would hope it would do. And of course, we can update everything by changing the timeline. So finally, now that we've created this sort of uh, larger larger scene, we want to tweak the lighting a bit, because it was really set up for one duke you know, in the background. Um, so again, all these lights came through with USD. right? We didn't add any lights to this scene. They came through the original USD file. So what the light mixer allows you to do is look at your scene graph tree and then give you this really nice high-level artist interface uh, to all of the lights in your scene. So we can just do things like change the color, uh, maybe tweak the intensity of our environment light that's in here. Um, and so we can drastically modify the original scene just by playing with this panel. And this is really powerful, right? Because this means we have tools all the way down to like the geometry level where we're changing points, we're changing attributes, and then all the way up to a high level sort of lighting perspective where I just want fast updates in my viewport. I want to see exactly what the change of my light uh, does to my scene. And the light mixer absolutely allows you to do that. And of course, again, the beauty of having this sort of live updating, Hydra paying attention to what's happening in the scene graph and passing that data to the render delegate gives us this nice uh, feedback loop. And so just to sort of briefly recap here, here's the whole network for everything that we did. Not too bad, relatively simple. Here's where we started with Duke uh, on his bike, his original motorcycle. Um, again, just navigating around in the viewport. And then the final result. We've swapped out his motorcycle for a flip cycle. Um, and we can now render the whole scene with our tweaked lighting. All of this exists on its own USD layer. So it can be written out to disk and just layered on top of the original layout. So everything we've done is non-destructive. And that's really using the USD tool set um, that already exists. And then what Houdini brings is this procedural layer on top of that. So you procedurally modify the USD scene, which is a uh, Again, we hope a really compelling way to work with this type of uh, file format. So if, you, uh, if you'd like to learn some more about uh, Solaris on Thursday uh, at 11 o'clock at the Houdini Hive, um, we're doing basically like about an hour long presentation on Solaris. We go into a lot more detail than we did here today. Um, but hopefully you found that uh, interesting and useful. Um, so uh, thank you very much. <laughs>